In this video, I will be showing you how to create your very own long pleated skirt. This is a very beginner friendly project in no small part due to the very adjustable nature of this skirt. So this long pleated skirt is made in the style of an 18th century petticoat and is essentially two rectangles of pleated fabric that are sewn together partially up the sides and then they fasten around the body with ties. There's two ties on the back panel and two ties on the front panel. And this makes for a skirt that is extremely adjustable. So it's perfect for me. I'm currently pregnant. So it's currently my favorite maternity skirt. Think of it as an 18th century version of the wrap skirt except that it's pleated. Historical people were really pros when it came to creating elegant woven fabric clothing that allowed for adjustability during the different phases of a woman's life, such as pregnancy. I th really think every woman needs a skirt like this. It's the perfect in-between option between modern elasticized or drawstring skirts versus those classic tailored waistband skirts that only fit your waist when it's a certain exact size. Because let's face it, most of us, our waist size fluctuates even just throughout the day let alone during different phases of life such as pregnancy, postpartum, weight gain, weight loss, or conditions like endometriosis. But the best part is that this skirt looks like it has that tailored waistband while being secretly adjustable. This skirt is a very beginner-friendly sewing project. If you can sew straight lines, you can sew this skirt. You also don't even need a serger or a zigzag stitch, and I'll be explaining all of that as we keep watching. Okay, so we're going to be starting with fabric. I chose to use linen because it's my absolute favorite. And I actually bought four yards of this linen because I was planning on a very long, very full skirt. I'm also using this linen twill tape and I will be using this for the waist ties, but you could alternately just extend the fabric waistband of your skirt into ties. I also chose to use this waistband interfacing, which is a sew-in interfacing. I wanted my skirt to have lots of fullness and lots of pleats, so I decided to use the entire width of the fabric from selvage to selvage. This worked out to about 54 inches. And the bonus of this is that it makes finishing your seams a lot easier later on. So now I'm just cutting out the skirt to the length that I require plus a generous hem allowance and cutting out two rectangular panels from the fabric in that way. And again, I'm just using the entire width of the fabric. You can see just how much extra fabric there is just for one half of my body, which I absolutely love, especially for a maternity skirt. So now it's time to measure your waist. You're going to want to do so more accurately than I'm showing here on camera just for the sake of the video. So my waist at the moment is about 31 inches. So you divide that by two. That gives me 15 and a half. And then you add two inches just for extra overlap. And you're going to want to add your seam allowance on top of that. Okay, so now I'm cutting out my waistband pieces. So there are two waistbands. One is for the front panel and one is for the back panel. And I'm using that waist measurement that I just worked out for this. And each waistband is a rectangle that's wide enough to be folded in half on itself, plus seam allowance. And here is the linen twill tape that I'll be using for my ties. You could just use cotton twill tape or extend the fabric of the waistband to form the ties as well. I also opted to use this very sturdy waistband interfacing that I later stitched into the waistband fabric. So here are all of my materials cut out and ready to go. So the great thing about using the entire width of your fabric is it makes for extremely easy side seams. All I did was I just stitched a simple seam and pressed it open and that was it and I don't have to worry about any fraying. If you cannot use the entire width of your fabric then I would suggest using a simple historical seam finishing technique such as flat felled seams or French seams. I'm leaving a 10 inch opening from the top of the skirt down so I'm only going to be sewing up until that pin that I just put down 10 inches for the below the waist. 
and this will allow an opening for us to get in and out of the skirt and adjust it to our bodies. And just sew a simple straight seam on your machine. Press that open and we're good to move on to the next step. So now I'm just going to be folding a rolled hem on those edges of the slit at the top of the skirt, the part that we left open for 10 inches. So you can see I'm just pressing that down to a rolled hem and then pinning it in place before sewing it at my machine. Okay, it's time for the fun part, which is pleating. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna say that I don't have a mathematical approach to this. I simply go by feel, which does require some trial and error, but I think it's a great way to learn pleating and it's very fun and relaxing. First, you mark the center of your panel. Right now I'm working on the front panel. So the center of our panel is going to become the center of a four inch wide box pleat, which will sit directly in the center of your tummy. So after creating that box pleat, we're then going to create little knife pleats that face outward toward the hips or toward the side seams of the skirt. The cool thing about 18th century skirts is that they had specific pleating patterns for the front versus the back. So we're just going to keep pleating our way towards the side. And I'm just showing you that you can vary the amount of fabric that you choose to fold on the underside of each pleat to help adjust it to the width that you need in the end. And you can see that my width ended up being not quite right, so I had to undo some of these pleats and redo them, but that's just the fun of it. Our back pleating is going to be done in much the same way, except that in this case, the center of the back panel is going to be the center point of these knife pleats that go in and face towards the center line. So the pleating will go right up to the back center and again it's these little knife pleats that face towards each other and meet in the center of your back. And again you can of course vary how much fabric is folded underneath each pleat. In other words the top of the pleat is always going to appear visually the same width as all of the other pleats on the panel but you can vary how much fabric is folded into the pleat and you can actually change this at the hips versus the center of your body depending on how much fullness you want in those areas. Personally, I like having fullness at the hips and the back center area, but obviously not at my front center area. And again, this may require some unpinning and repinning, but again, that's just the fun part of creating these pleats. Now I'm going to press these nice and crisply. You could of course choose to press them all the way down the skirt, but that's just too much work. And I'm using this fancy pressing cloth to help these pleats just hold their shape, hopefully for longer than they would otherwise. And so now I'm just sewing a simple basting stitch down to hold these pleats down before we move on to attaching our waistband. And there we go. There are all our pleats sewn in place. It's always a big breath of relief when that's done and you don't have to worry about your pins falling out and you can just move on to attaching your waistband. Okay, so here are those rectangle waistbands that we cut out earlier. I'm going to be showing you a simple pressing trick to make attaching the waistband much easier. So you can see that I'm fully in half, except it's not exactly in half. One of the sides is a little longer than the other side, and that's for a good reason. Next, we're going to fold under each edge towards the center. This is just our extra seam allowance. And so in the end, we'll be left with a waistband that's all pressed in place, but the underside of this waistband comes down a bit lower than the front or the top of the waistband. This is so that when we later stitch it in place at our machine, we don't have to worry about not catching the underside in the stitches because it hangs down that much lower than the front, so it will be guaranteed to be caught in our stitching line. 
So at this point, I have already basted my waistband interfacing that I chose to use. This is optional. You don't have to use interfacing. And then I'm just pinning it in place over the top of each panel, leaving a little bit of overhang on either side, which will later be used to attach our ties into. And of course, you could opt to just have your waistband extend all the way down to form the waist ties as well. So now I'm just top stitching this waistband in place, sewing very close to the edge of the waistband for looks and pinning my waist ties in place now into the ends of those waistbands. And I'm just hand stitching these in place. So there are four waist ties, two at the front and two at the back. And now it's time to try it on. And so that way we can pin our hem length in place. So I like to first tie the back on and then the front. And of course you get to tuck those ties underneath so no one will know that it's an adjustable 18th century style skirt. It's really amazing how tailored this skirt comes out looking <laughs> despite being so adjustable. I left a very generous amount of hem allowance because I love very, very wide hems. In this skirt, the hem was very wide. It was in fact more like a built-in skirt hem facing. So it adds just more fullness and body to the bottom of your skirt, which just gives it a more professional, tailored and elegant look. So I pressed that in place and I'm just doing, of course, more detailed pinning. You can see just how wide this hem is. It's not even a hem, it's more of a facing, as I said. And I chose to hand stitch this in place for invisibility and so I can easily alter the hem later because since this is a maternity skirt, I did leave the hem a bit longer in the front than at the back. And there we go, there is our finished skirt. Okay, so here's the final putting on. So I like to step into my skirt and I like to tie the back around to my front first. I have my bow a little off to the side just so it doesn't make an awkward bulge right at my center area, which is already bulgy enough at the moment. And then I tie the back and tuck those ties in and just move everything around, make sure all the ties are hidden. And there we go. I have my lovely, elegant, tailored looking pleated skirt that is very adjustable for my body and will probably fit me well into the postpartum as well. Just a nice detail shot of those pleats. Also give a thumbs up if you like the videography at this point done by my eight year old son. There are the back pleats. and that lovely wide substantial hem. And just showing how this can be styled in other ways, like with this braided skinny belt. You can tuck in your shirt, leave it out, whatever you want. Okay, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed making this skirt with me or that you have at least drawn some inspiration for a future skirt project for yourself or someone you love. Have you ever felt dissatisfied with modern skirt options? Let me know in the comments section. Are you feeling inspired to make this skirt yourself? I'd likewise love to hear from you below. Do you love historical handmade fashion as well as historically inspired hair care practices? You'll definitely want to subscribe to my channel. I also have a YouTube membership that you can sign up for for approximately five USD a month and you can get free 24 hours of ad-free access to each of my videos as well as a couple exclusive posts per month and I really appreciate all of your support. There's also a super thanks button below the video where you can choose to thank me with a small monetary donation and I also have a buy me a coffee button or link in the description as well and thanks again. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video!